All right, everybody, we're back in the Vicky3 Academy and we're working on another law video today. So we haven't actually finished the law series. I was just looking over the ones that were still missing and a couple of them popped off the page. Church and state amongst them. So church and state, it has a couple of a couple of ramifications. One, it is one of these things that's going to determine whether or not pops are being discriminated against in your, in your country or not, um, which is going to be important in terms of determining what kind of migration you get. Um, there also apparently are balancing issues with whether or not um, pops who are discriminated against are getting the right amount politi of political power, but uh, they are certainly getting a lower standard of living because um, most of them are going to be getting paid less. Uh, but regardless, there are some, some nuances to the way discrimination based off of religion works. First of all, I'm sure some of you have experienced once you've switched over to multiculturalism um, that you've had migrations that haven't even really like lined up with the church and state laws that, that you have in place. Like you might be in freedom of conscience as Japan and get a bunch of Russians that migrate over. And that doesn't make sense, right? Because they're not they're not in the same religion group. Those guys are Christian and, and you're Shinto, which uh, is in the Eastern religion group. Well, the reason behind that is that religious discrimination the pops are like less concerned about than cultural discrimination. Um, uh, and I, I think that kind of makes sense because the mechanism for religious conversion is to be discriminated against. You only convert religion when the state is discriminating against you. Um, whereas on the other hand, the, the conversion for um, culture requires you to be accepted, right? It requires you to be allowed to be part of the melting pot. Um, and so, I think it makes sense that, that religious uh, discrimination wouldn't preclude uh, migration, considering that it doesn't preclude incorporation into the, into the state. Um, but there are still cascading ramifications, even about the, the nature of the state religion itself. So the state religion is going to, you can find it this way, you can find it in your, your diplomacy screen, but it's going to have traits, usually one. And that trait is going to determine um, what re what religions it views as being like foreign or not foreign. Um, and so, for those of you who are you know paying attention, Eastern religion groups have a lot more flexibility um, and probably should just be in freedom of conscience instead of total separation because um, they they tolerate basically everybody except for Christians and I mean Christians and Muslims, sure. But like, look, all of the Hindu. All of the Shinto, all of the Sikh, all of the Mahayana, all the like every, everybody. I would say there's a Buddhist and Eastern, um, but like absolutely everybody is 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 in on this, except for you know a couple of people off in Europe or whatever. Um, and so, don't be afraid to stay in freedom of conscience as a an Eastern country. And it may not even be wrong to stay in freedom of conscience as basically everyone, um, simply because of the ramifications. So what it, what does it do? State religion and total separation both have these requirements where they disallow multiple production methods that that we can show right here um if we have if we have any of them i think we, we have to have a government administration yeah we do we have government administrations and urban centers also um academies are are under the same umbrella but these are things where if you have um state religion you have to use administrative clergy Whereas if you have um, total separation, you have to use secular, secular administration. Um, but on the other hand, if you have freedom of conscience in between, you can choose either one, um, which means that you can selectively use these buildings under freedom of conscience to power up one area over another. Um, so I think between all of those, those different things, this... I'm pretty sure is going to be one of these like air quotes solved um, law sections. I think generally freedom of conscience is one of the strongest laws in the in the game um, just because of what it offers you and what it asks from you because it doesn't really it doesn't take anything from you except being under total separation, which generally not a big deal. Um, and it gives you 100 authority. 100 authority is a that that right there is a consumption tax. So it, y y y you can ignore the consumption tax if you want, but if you have enough pops buying enough stuff, that's a lot of money that you're giving up for the ability to not be able to put um, clergymen into bureaucracy 
not being required to, just not the ability to. I don't know. I think I think church and state largely is solved. I think I think that some of the some of the laws are more complicated than others, but I think that this one right now at least a lot stronger than the other ones. Okay, that's Walker. Take care.